Hey everybody, this is Scott Gustafson with Vital MX. Today I'm going to show you how to rebuild a shock. Uh, I'm going to make it real simple so that you can do it from your house. So watch the video and follow along. Now most of the tools you need to rebuild a shock are things you find around the house in your toolbox. There's a couple of special tools that we use. Um, we do use a seal head driver and we do use a shock bullet to allow the seal to go over um, the shock shaft nicely. Uh, you want to have some type of tool that is very sharp and thin and strong to pick out the clips. Um, we're also using a high strength thread locker and it's also nice um, to have some type of lockering tool that will allow you to uh, hammer on the lock rings without you know damaging or marring them too much so that's why we have this here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to count my suspension clickers. So I'm going to start with the rebound and I'm just going to count the clicks until they until it turns all the way in. Then I'll record that. So this is the rebound high speed and that's 19 clicks out. Now I'm going to back this all the way out. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same for all of my other uh, adjusters up here. So I have compression low speed, compression high speed, and rebound low speed. After I've recorded my clicker settings, I'm going to measure the length of my spring as it's compressed. Now I've mounted my shock um, upside down in a vise here. I'm using soft aluminum jaws so I don't scratch or mar anything like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove uh, the lock rings here. Okay, now once I've loosened these up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove this collar at the bottom of the shock. Okay, now I can remove the shock spring. Now with the shock spring, spring removed, I always like to check the action of my shock. Just to make sure that it compresses and rebounds well. If it doesn't, I know there's issues with it. Next, I'll take a hammer and chisel and remove this end plate here. I'll just do it gradually, a little on each side. Now I'm going to remove the nitrogen. Now to remove this cap and bladder, uh, you can press down on uh, you can press down on it. Sometimes they're a little bit stubborn and require uh, a special tool, and they do make tools pretty handy for this. Sometimes it does require a little tap with a hammer. Now there's a clip in here we're going to remove. Take that out and put it aside. And now you can remove your cap and bladder. Now I'm going to separate the shock. I'm going to use this seal head driving tool and it just goes around the seal in here. I'm going to compress it. And again, there's a clip inside here, and I'm just going to pick that out. Now, when I pull this out, a lot of times they get to a certain point and stick. So what you'll end up doing is you'll tap it out with a hammer and a tool to help you get it out. Now here's where you're going to make a little bit of a mess, so have some rags ready. You pull the shock out. You can let that drain. Now you can take the shock body out of the vise and drain the old shock oil out of there. Now in order to replace the seals on the body here, I need to remove the valving. This um, shock has been revalved before, so it hasn't been peened on. Usually from the factory, they're peened on, and you do have to grind uh, the top of the, 
shock nut off in order to get it off. So this is going to make it a little easier for us. Okay, just to keep everything together, I'll take all of my valving out and put it aside. Then I can remove the seal head right here. So right now, I'm going to remove all the seals out of my seal head. So I'll just gradually work the dust seal off. Okay, so your seal head consists of a dust seal, uh, a bumper of some sort, uh, the oil seal itself, and some spacers and washers here. There's also an O-ring um, to keep the oil from coming on the outside. The other thing to look at in the seal is there's a bushing on the inside, and you want to make sure that that's in good condition. So when I'm ready to put some new seals in here, um, I'll just put a little grease on each, each one. I'll coat the inside and also where they mount. Uh, when I put the dust seal on, I can just use a simple socket the right size and drive that down. Next, I'm going to put this spacer back in. Again on my oil seal. Put some grease on it. Just make sure you remember which way they're oriented. This spacer, this bumper, and finally the O-ring. Okay, when I reinstall the seal head on here, um, I want to use a, a bullet here so that everything goes on smoothly. Uh, and I don't cut anything on these threads or this lip right here. You could also tape this up and make a nice smooth transition. It would do the same thing. So I'll put my seal head back on. Okay, now on this particular bike, I'm going to go one step further, and I'm actually going to lower, um, shorten the rear shock to lower the rear end of the bike. Now, if I just put uh, this normal plate on here, you can see when the bike tops out, it fully extends to this position. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put a little plastic spacer in here. Um, Racetech sells these. Uh, they're really nice because oil flows through here and they fit and they don't smash or break or anything like that. So um, this is three millimeters thick and it'll effectively lower uh, the bike at the seat about 10 millimeters altogether. So just by putting this on here and putting the plate back on, you can see now the shock doesn't extend quite as far and effectively you're shortening the shock. The nice thing about this is it's fully reversible. If you don't like it, you can take it off. If you sell the bike to somebody else, you can take it off. Um, so it's, it's a nice, easy way to shorten a shock. Next, I'm going to put the valving um, on, the, uh, on the shock. And essentially what you have here is this is your compression stack. Uh, this is your piston. That's your rebound stack. And you can tell the difference is the uh, compression stack has a larger um, shim, so it goes in this direction, whereas the rebound has a shorter or a smaller shim, and uh, it's oriented in this direction. Okay, when I put the nut back on, I'm going to use some high strength locking compound.
One thing I like to do before um, I assemble everything back together is I like to make sure that the uh, there's a rod that extends through your shock shaft here and I like to make sure that it moves freely up and down and that it's completely down when I start to bleed the shock. So what I do is I just put a small uh, blunt tool in this end, being careful not to uh, press down on the end of the uh, rod inside too hard. And then I'll just turn the uh, rebound adjuster back and forth and make sure it just has a little bit of movement. It's only going to move a fraction of a millimeter, but that's all that it does move. You just need to make sure it does that and you need to make sure it bottoms out. Now we're ready to put some oil uh, back into the shock body. Now uh, you can use any oil of your choice. Um, in this particular case, we're using Maxima three weight shock fluid. Generally a shock will use a very, very lightweight fluid and they do this um, for heat. A shock heats up quite a bit more than we realize. And if we're using a lightweight oil, it's not changing the viscosity that much. So if you were to put a 10 or a 20 or a 30 weight oil in here, when it heated it up, it might change it to a 15 weight oil. And so, you know, the oil would be moving twice as fast as it should. In this particular case, it's probably heating up and moving just a fraction of a point. So that's why we use such a low rating. And this is also why we valve according to the fluid you put in there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pour some oil into the reservoir here and it's going to bleed over into the main body here. Okay, once these two chambers have evened themselves out, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the bladder back in the shock body here. And you don't have to worry about oil fill spilling out. That's kind of what you want. You want it to overfill just a little bit. We're going to put the clip back on. You're going to want to make sure that this is seated nicely. Otherwise you're going to have a mess on your hands. So just make sure that's seated in its groove. Go ahead and unscrew this tool. Okay. Now I'm going to partially fill this bladder. I'm going to put 40 PSI in here. I'm using nitrogen. You can use air at this stage. If you have to, you could use a hand pump because this particular shock has a really odd Schrader valve stem here. I have to use an adapter. Once it's filled up, uh, the bladder is going to expand, uh, seat itself here. You're going to want to make sure that this is seated nicely. Everything is even. You don't want to have it. So the bladder is cockeyed in here. Now that I've got the bladder seated, I can go ahead and fill the main chamber up with oil. And I'm going to want to fill this up about, oh, maybe about two inches from the top. And I can assemble everything here. Once it hits the oil, it goes very smoothly. Okay. Now I'm still about an inch and a half from the top. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that till I'm very close to the top. Okay. Now you're going to go about the process of bleeding the shock. So what you'll do is extend it, extend it so that it doesn't go out so far that you're catching air and go ahead and compress the shock. You're going to want to put more force down on the compression stroke and on the rebound stroke, you're going to want to just work it up. So you go straight down, press it down. What you're doing is opening the valving up allowing all the oil to pass through there, making sure that there's no air pockets anywhere in the shock. What you're looking for here is that you have no air bubbles uh, or any kind of foaming going on when you're, when uh, you're pressing it up and down. So this one bled up very nicely. Once I've got the shock bled to where I'm satisfied and I have no bubbles up here, I'm going to move the seal head down to the oil and I filled the oil pretty much to the top of the shock body. Don't worry about having oil spill out of here, getting extra oil. It's normal when you're building a shock that you're going to make a little bit of a mess. Uh, I'm going to put this seal driver on here. 
and compress it as far as I can. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the air out of the bladder. And when I do that, it allows me to press the seal head in. Okay, now everything's seated down there. I'm going to put the clip back in this side. Now again, this is something that you want to make sure this clip is perfectly seated in here. Otherwise, you're going to have a mess or a nasty accident. So just make sure that it follows its groove nicely. And we'll tighten the valve stem back up. Okay, now we're ready to fill the shock up with nitrogen. The reason I'm using nitrogen is that it's a gas that it ha it's not affected by heat as much and it doesn't lose um, you know, its compression. So essentially, if you put 150 pounds in here a month from now, there'll still be 150 pounds in here. So I'll start by just partially filling it up. Again, I'm gonna put 40 PSI in here. Make sure everything seats correctly. Okay, that made the seal head come up to the clip. Same thing with the bladder here. Now I can fully compress it. Uh, shocks generally take about 150 PSI. And if we look on our gauge here, we're on 150 PSI. Now I can take my shock out of the vise. First, before I do that, I'm gonna make sure that the action of the shock is good. You can see everything is smooth. It, compresses and rebounds the way it should. And now we're going to take it out, clean it. Uh, we're going to tap this plate back down and we'll put the shock spring on. Last step is going to be to put the shock spring on and reset your clickers. So there's a seat to put on here. And you want to put this clip in, make sure everything is seated nicely. And you can just tighten your lock rings up. Now before I had gotten all my settings for uh, how much the shock spring was preloaded, go ahead and set that. Go ahead and um, set your clickers back to where they were and you'll have a fully rebuilt shock. Okay, this is another tech tip from Vital MX. Uh, if you like that tip and you wanna see others, let us know in the comments. If you have a better way of building a shock or you've had a horror story with a shock that's not built right, let us know. Um, once again, this is Scott Gustafson from Vital MX, and we'll see you soon.